Hello and welcome back to my garage. Today in the shop, a Peugeot, Peugeot, a Peugeot 206. Uh, this is a new car for my sister-in-law, you know, the one with the Skoda Fabia. Finally, that thing is going to the graveyard. Uh, that thing is done. Chapter closed. So, this is their new victim. Like I said, this is a Peugeot 206. Uh, she bought it and of course it had uh, a couple of well, small issues in my opinion. Uh, one of those issues is, uh, well, as you can see, uh, one of the lender sensors is uh, not working properly. Uh, I bought, well, there are two lender sensors on the, uh, on the, on the car. And I didn't know anymore which one I needed to replace, but it is the uh, bank one, sensor one. So that is the pre-cat one. Most of the time it's the pre-cat one because that thing is getting the most heat. Well, that's not completely true. But for some reason it's always, most of the time, the pre-cat one that's going bad. I bought a new one. Uh, like I said, I didn't know anymore which one was bad, so I bought also the uh, second one, or well, the after the cat one, but that one we don't have to replace. The only problem is, is that the computer is now also spouting the other code. Something to do with the engine positioning, bank one stuff. I don't know for sure what it is, I have to look it up. But it could be a uh, correlation between this one and, well, that other code as well. I don't remember reading that code the first time I got this car. So, yeah, that's something. Hopefully, it will be gone after installing this one. Uh, other than that, the car needs a, uh, a tank strap. That thing is almost gone, and I think it's a annual safety check failure. A failure, but uh, for some reason it just passed it. Though, so, but it has to be changed, in my opinion. One of the tie rod ends, uh, the boot is uh, torn, so that was also a MOT um, failure, but. More than that, uh, only thing I could find was uh, it probably needs some new brakes in the near future. They were not completely gone yet, but that is something that has to be done. Um, that strap, that tie rod and uh, the brakes, we will do a other time. That the engine light is on, you know, the emergency engine light, that yellow engine thingy is on. That makes her a little bit nervous. So this is what we're going to do first. So, let's get uh, to work. The dent in the hood was how she bought it. For the rest, it's quite a clean car. The only thing is, uh, well, this big dent. The previous owner had been stuck it into a fence or something. Well, at least that was the story. But because of a dent, the car just drives fine. Well, luckily for us, the sensor is just here at the top. So uh, we don't have to lift the car up or something. It looks like we have to pull this orange thing out and then we can disconnect the connector. Well, it looks like it uh, would fit, so that's a good thing. What I most of the time just do is just cut the wires off. So I can uh, get a full socket on there. For some reason, I can't find a long enough socket that fits this sensor. Didn't I say something like it was uh, not a too difficult job? Well. Stuff like this happens. Most of the time it's just that these can be really stuck in there. But in this case... So I did cut the sensor in half. Hopefully this will be enough that uh, the my sockets are going to fit. Oh. And of course it's really stuck also. Uh, 
Don't try to torque it off. The chances are that the half of the uh, sensor was stuck in uh, to the uh, the hole, and then you have another problem at your at your hands. Maybe a rattle gun will be better. To be honest, it looks a little uh, cross threaded. I don't think I have a tap this big. Here we have the new sensor. Hopefully, it uh, will thread in nicely. You don't have to torque these down to oblivion. This is nice and seated, so even the frets are not too big of a problem. But uh, yeah, you can encounter that. Just like so. Pushed in there. And now we can use this clip to mount it. Well, to mount it back in there. Maybe the other way around is better. Because this is going to sit like, oh, okay, yeah. So, like so, and then this is sitting right here. The other one was broken off. Is it the other way around? Huh, it's the other way around, okay. We're learning. Um, like so. Bit weird, but okay. Yeah, like so. Like I said, a bit weird because it's now touching that heat shield. Well, maybe a zip tie right here, and then I call it golden. Mm. This one is going like so. Now, let me get me a zip tie and put this out of the way. Even better, I've got one of these. So I can plug it in a hole that's sitting right here. And then we can put this through here and it looks almost factory. So. Ta-da! That's it. Here we have those codes, so I will uh, uh, remove those. So I did erase them. Let's start the car. Does it just pops in the exhaust? And there you have it, how to change the Bank 1 sensor on a Peugeot 206. I took the car out for a drive and, uh, and of course the fault disappeared. Uh, that P0008 um, message that we also got is disappeared for now, uh, but the car does backfire. And well, when I looked up that code, it was for the, uh, well, it has to do something with the timing. So maybe the uh, crank positioning sensor, or maybe even slack in the chain or something like that can cause uh, that error code. So I do think we are going to see that again. The reason is that backfire. The backfire has also to do with, of course, that uh, your uh, timing. But for now, it is gone. Uh, well, we keep uh, an eye on it, of course, if it's uh, 
coming back or not. I did uh, took the car for a pretty long drive and I didn't see anything popping up for now. This is a wrap for this moment, but we're definitely going to see the car again for a full uh, oil change and stuff like that and the other stuff that I have uh, uh, mentioned that I have mentioned. Uh, so yeah, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it or at least learned something from it. And if you did, please give it a like. If you want to follow me around, you know what to do. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye.